This is a model. So everyone hold your right hand up, go like this, help you remember, neurologically powerful. <laughs> okay, this represents, wave at me, this represents your cortical area, the prefrontal cortex, the anterior cingulate, etc. Okay, this is where your thinking, your articulation, your creative process comes from right here. Now this, wiggle your thumb at me. Okay, good, that's enough. This represents your limbic system. Your amygdala, your thalamus, and your hippocampus. Amygdala, just so you understand, simply means the interpreter. So it's going to get information, and it will make an interpretation. Is it safe? That's all. Can there be pleasure, or is it not? That's all it wants to know. Pleasure or pain? Thalamus. It's the all-seeing eye over Mordor. Have you guys seen Lord of the Rings? Okay, it simply looks out for 10 minutes and goes, pleasure or pain? That's all I care about. Is it going to happen to me or can I do something fun with it? And it has just that decision to make. The prefrontal cortex or the cerebral cortex, before it makes a decision, it has to convene a board of directors meeting. Then it establishes a committee to go research what should be done about the scenario. <clears throat> so here's an example. So we'll keep it here for a second. Oh, by the way, the hippocampus is your external hard drive. It stores everything that's happened to you from conception on, including in the womb. If you've had a surgery and you were anesthetized, you will remember everything that the doctor said inside your subconscious in the hippocampus, everything that is said there. So here's the story. Let's pretend we're back 20,000 BC and we're all cavemen and cave women. Okay, men, we're the hunters, the gatherer. We're going to go out and we're going to get food tonight. So we go out on a hunting party and um, we shoot ourselves a saber tooth. Well, we spear them. However, however they did it, I don't think they carry Glocks. <laughs> so we get us a saber tooth. We come back to the cave and the women folk, they fix up the saber tooth, put them on a rotisserie and start going. And we're all sitting around the cave having a great time, right? <clears throat> right now, the thalamus doesn't have a lot to do. Just then, the mother of the tiger comes walking into the mouth of our cave. Okay, now the thalamus, who's constantly searching like this, sees the mother of her son who's been invited to dinner, but not the way he thought he was going to be. And the mother is not pleased. So what's the thalamus doing about right now? The thalamus, yeah, but it doesn't get frightened. It sends just neutral data. It says, saber tooth cat mother. Um, she has the following look on her face. She's salivating at the mouth, and she's got blood in her claws, apparently from the last clan she visited. Okay, that's all the information is. That data will go to the hippocampus and to the amygdala for interpretation while it goes to the cerebral cortex. Now, the cerebral cortex, remember, has to convene a meeting. So they're going to be talking about it, thinking about it, sending out a research party, you know, with a bunch of statisticians and PhDs to get this done. So now what the, what's going to happen is the thalamus is going to send the data. The hippocampus will say, now let's see. The last time we saw a saber-toothed tiger like this, there was death involved and carnage. So at that moment, the amygdala will make a decision to fight or flight. And in that moment, we're going to look around and we're going to say, okay, you're going to be Uncle Bob for a minute. Uncle Bob's about 70 years old and caveman ages, he's about 300. And we're going to say, okay, to fight the cat, it's probably not going to work. So we're going to go into flight. And as long as I run faster than I live for another day. So I just got to get ahead in front of Uncle Bob and everything's going to be good. That's how the process works. So all it cares about is to protect you from harm. Now, Sabretooth is a rather extravagant story, and none of us will be facing that in reality. But emotionally and theoretically, we do. That's called PTSD. And we'll, come, we'll cover that. OK, so the brain stem is right here on the palm. It basically regulates all the body functions. And the body is a whole different set of brains. It's going to cover your major organs. Every organ in your body is a brain. And those brains are independent in their own sphere. But what happens if one brain breaks down? It affects every other brain a part of the body. So what we've got is the complete layout 
of an integrated person. This is the goal. We want to be integrated like this so we're working intrapersonally healthy. So if I were to have a relationship with my bride and she were to be integrated this way, then we have an interpersonal relationship that's integrated. But what happens if we, we make a union and Richard over here is completely fragmented? In other words, I live life by running into challenges and I flip my lid. I lose, I come out of my head. That's called fragmented and so I'm no longer working completely as a whole. What happens when we flip our lid is the amygdala takes charge, puts the cerebral cortex into a holding pattern. Have you ever been so angry that you're having a verbal discussion with someone and all you really come out of your mouth is spit <laughs> instead of words? And it's frustrating because you know what you want to say, but it's not coming out. That's because the cerebral cortex shuts down when we flip. We become fragmented. Now, we were designed as humans to spend 10 to 15 minutes a week fragmented. But we're spending roughly seven to eight hours a day in our society today. And because of that, we have a lot of chronic illnesses that are going on.